What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> well, speak on it. Yes! I want to say I love the way that everybody um, received my... Uh, receipts from last week's episode of speak on it and candy went through all the albums and was just like girl and i've seen clips of them performing without latasha and and i have to say it's still entertaining i've moved on sorry latasha you got you gotta I deal with um with a motown gospel i saw it on social media and it's kind of funny to me that so many people you know, for years, I've seen people on lines of, oh, Candy can't sing, or Candy can't this, Candy can't that. And I think when people don't really listen, you know, they just believe what everybody tells them, right? So that rumor about, you know, t you know Tasha saying that, oh, I, you know, was jealous of her being solo, or I was whatever the other rumor people said, I hooked up with Jermaine to get more solos, all of that stuff really never made sense to me because I always knew that I sang a lot on the albums, you know what I mean? And so um, this time I had had enough and so I had to break it down for y'all in receipts. But even still, Candy had time today and laid out exactly why she really is that girl when it comes to escape once and for all. And I was just glad that our good sis didn't break out into crying because <laughs> y'all already know how Candy gets. And I guess finally, people understood what I was saying. So I appreciate um, everybody taking the, ten taking the time to pay attention. But speaking of receipts, honey, I got my receipts for this week's episode as well because y'all trying it again. I was seeing today in the blogs how some of you were going crazy because the clip of me saying to SWV. This one, this show, we should co-headline. Okay. Um, everybody was in an uproar like, oh, escape your humble themselves. Ah! Baby, I'm gonna explain to you why we were in the right for what we were saying, but not yet. I'm gonna get to the other part of the show first. I'm gonna tell no, the truth. No. I'm gonna tell uh -huh. the truth. This episode was good, good. So the first part of this episode was very touching. Tamika and her mama almost had me crying. My eyes were welling up, okay? I really was, I don't know, because you know, I don't know if it's because I have been around them and their family since I was a kid. I don't know why it made me want to cry. I don't know if all of y'all could relate. It, it is hard to have a conversation with a parent because you know, parents feel like they always right and you was, you're always wrong. Tamika and her mom had me in tears. I don't know about y'all. My eyes were welling up. And I don't know if it's because I have like a long-term relationship with them going back since we were children. It really made me emotional watching Tamika and her mother have this conversation. I mean, obviously it is hard for most people to just say to their parents how they feel because a lot of times our parents just kind of feel like they're always right, we're always wrong, and whatever. In this situation, obviously I can relate to Tamika because I've been around, you know, for years. I understood what she meant when she was saying to her mom, you're not the fifth member. When it comes to escape business, you're not the fifth member. It wasn't any disrespect, even though I see her mom took it that way. Okay, I am the fifth member. When I first put that microphone in your hand when you was a little girl. It's kind of hard if Tasha and Tamika are having issues about business, right? Um, because a lot of our disagreements are, you know, dealing with the group or how she feels like Tasha's husband is way too involved in our business and stuff like that. If they're having debates about anything like this, then Tasha is tell telling her side to her mom and then Tamika automatically feels like her mom is taking Tasha's side every time, like right off the rip. And it's like two of them against her. And she's just, she's just feeling like, mom, I shouldn't even have to be discussing this with you because this is our business, meaning 
our financial business that you know involves Tasha and involves Tamika. Other things that happen that you guys don't get a chance to see. But because her mom, you know, obviously was her support when they were kids, she feels like she's always able or entitled to have an opinion or you know, um, enforce her opinion about what is going on with us as a group. Just seeing Tamika trying to express her feelings and saying that she was might have to pull back, I know that was tough for her. I know that was tough for her. I know it's tough for me when I'm trying to have a conversation with my mom. So I can only imagine what she was going through in that moment. And it definitely made me cry. How did y'all feel about that? I know y'all probably was like, ooh, it was a lot going on, a lot going on. I no longer was making any money. I didn't have anything coming in. You were living in your car. Yeah, I had some nights. The other thing that was very touching to me in the show, I'm going to hit up all the touching moments. The other thing that was seriously touching to me was when Lily shared what she was dealing with um, you know, but when their group was having their breakup or their hiatus back in the day. It was rough. It was rough. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of artists, just because they make a lot of money at a time or whatever, people be spending that money, right? And when the group breaks up. That's what Coco did. She shopped the deal and, and took off. I was pissed. And then it's like, here you have artists trying to figure out how they're going to make it. And then it's weird because it's like, okay, how are they going to maintain their lifestyle? Like, so they supposed to go and get a regular job so people can clown them. I remember some years ago when Lily had um, first moved to Atlanta or she had been here for like a little while and I saw her and we were talking and I think she said that she was working for the water company or something like that you know nine to five job nothing that was involved with the entertainment business she felt like every time one of their songs would come on the radio while she was at work like certain people would be trying to clown her like oh there you there you on the radio girl stuff like that and I can only imagine how she felt you know trying to figure out how to get herself back on her feet and that was so touching to hear how she even had to live in a car for a while and it's kind of like you see those stories in movies about people who were huge and had all these record sales and then all of a sudden you know they don't have any money and how they're maintaining and that was her reality you know I know that had to be super hard for her I can only imagine what she was going through those two stories in the show it was just it was very heartfelt, very touching. The, oh, the other the other touching moment was seeing Coco and her son. See, that's what I want to talk to you about. But I don't want to go back to school. What? I related to both sides because I know as a parent, like, you know, Coco wants her son to be, she wants him to be a dentist, right? She He's smart. You know, he was doing good in school and she wants him to stay on that path because we know how the entertainment business can be up and down financially. So of course she wants him to have security. We all want our kids to have security. I relate to her because, you know, I want my daughter to be a lawyer. Now she in school. She's like, I'm going to work in the music industry. When I she getting her music business degree and want to go just work in the industry and doing management. And, and I'm like, girl, go get your law degree. <laughs> That's what I want to say. But I'm trying to be supportive. So I totally related to that conversation but to see him in tears that was like wow like I didn't know like well how do you navigate that because you want to be supportive of your kids obviously we started out our careers at a young age so it's like how do we really tell them they can't do what they want to do so I mean I guess it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword you know she's like that's her best friend but at the same time it's like she knows what best what's best for him as a parent but at the same time you got to support your kids' dreams. But, ooh, he was really, really emotional about that. But Jalen, he has a beautiful voice. Make sure y'all get his music, honey. You can just go to his page on Instagram and hit the link and, you know, support his music because 
hey, all artists, we sensitive about our shit, honey, and we need support. Let's go on to the tea. Which part are you starting at? The meeting or the studio? Tasha. Like, where? which one are you doing first? Tasha. No, we starting out with Tasha. Here's the thing. I done said this a million times. I feel like every time Tasha get a solo deal, she be giving us her ass to kiss. If you had an ass to kiss. So this was a prime example of what I've been saying. We didn't even know she had a solo deal at first. We just knew she was just being funny style. Like earlier in the year, it wasn't even seven to eight months before that, that she was trying to get me to come back to do shows with the group. And I'm like, okay, cool or whatever. We... About this, we had started back doing shows together. And now she back to acting like she didn't even want to do no shows with us. Just free in my mind and just being Latasha. So we were like, what is she on? You know what I mean? Like, what is the issue? She's going out, you know, we in meetings with SWV and stuff, and she tooting up her nose, like, like she don't know if she want to do this and all this stuff. And so it was just like, what is up with her? So it is not surprising to see that good old Rocky <laughs> had been taking Tasha to get her record deal. Think about it. Again, and to step away from the group. Because here's the thing, if she's she's always saying, especially now in public, because I'd be like, did she say this to sound good or whatever? I said what? Like she's always saying like she still wants to be a part of the group, but here we are as a group. This is obviously a big opportunity to possibly do a joint tour. Cause at the time it was like promoters, um, I guess when Mona had told people that we were about to do the show, the conversation was really more about doing a tour together. It wasn't really about the one performance. Let's be clear. You know, when whenever we do tours, that means that's back to back money. just one day one show money that's like you know back to back money so that could have been you know a nice little coin for everybody just like what why is she tripping on every other time i turn around she upset about something she upset with time i mean she upset with tamika she upset with me she's just finding excuses to not just engage with everybody it's such a privilege to be on this wall it is seeing her in nashville we in this thing seeing her you know having her meeting she was super excited about that good for her that's not the only thing it's like now you are telling taj i had a meeting today oh yeah yeah for a, a record deal about your solo deal and you still haven't even told us a solo deal yeah yep and it was so funny um they showed Taj coming to my house to share with me the news that she got. Hello. Hello, beautiful. What's up? It was more that was said between me and Taj because Taj and I plenty of times over the years have talked about how Coco used to be acting when, you know, she went solo on them back in the day. And so she was just like, girl, they the same breed. She was saying all of that in there. They ain't put all that in there. She did say it's the same situation, which it is. I, I mean, I mean, I guess theirs is a little bit different because, you know, Coco is like the official lead singer of their group. Our group does not have an official lead singer, you know what I mean? Because all of us have sung on hits on the albums or whatever. The attitude is the same, honey. The attitude is the same. Tasha, she could have easily just came to us and said, hey guys, you know, I really want to do a solo project. I'm going to do this gospel thing. You know, also I'm going to do this with you guys. But, you know, I'm working on my... She could have easily said that. Like, I don't even understand what the big deal was. Like, what was it? Oh, 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 I forgot. She said she likes to keep it uh, quiet because... You know, sometimes she has things going, it don't all the way come together. What does that mean? Are you planning on leaving the group? But as y'all heard from last week's episode and things she says in the public, she must have thought that the villain, which 
you know, I'm the one she makes the villain. She must have thought that I was going to come and shut this album down. Is that what she thought was about to happen? For some reason, my project got shelved. <laughs> I, I get so sick of that narrative being thrown around about her trying to have people think that I done stopped something for her. But she she didn't say my name this time, but she definitely said, you know, because, you know, sometimes things don't come together, you know, after we go going. Do you think she didn't tell you guys because um, she didn't want to do both? It sounds like she was very happy when she was talking to Taj. Like, she just wants to be solo. And maybe that's why she was holding back with you guys? I mean, I can't really say why Tasha did not share with us. I mean, I definitely feel like she would prefer to be solo, to be honest with you. I feel like if she had um, a solo career that was lucrative enough, I don't think she would be dealing with us. I just want peace. Honestly, I do not think she would really be dealing with us. I think that she, because she has said things all throughout the show. I don't know if they, you know, they're going to show it or not, but different times she was just like, um, she needs peace and, like, as if we ain't giving her no peace. Well, shit, they don't give me no peace either. But I'm here. But she's just like, you know, and and her her spirit is better when she ain't with us. Her energy is better. With her. And I'm just like, okay, so I don't know if it's a thing of she really just don't want to be around us. Or if, I don't know. I have no idea. She contradicts herself so much. Cause like, I don't know if y'all heard, she was doing interviews this past week talking about, oh yes, I was so excited about doing a tour with SWV. I'm like, you know, you just lied to these people on your interview because this, now they done played this episode when you, the whole time, every time the, the show come up with SWV, you sit them like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe she was going on tour with SWV. N Tasha no, and no, girl, no. How is she saying this in interviews? And it's because she be lying. She, I, we've been, we've been thinking amongst our group that maybe she just this interview coach or somebody is coaching her to say things that they feel like sound good to the people, so that y'all would be on her side. Because you could clearly watch the show and see that she was the one that was kind of like holding up the decision making for doing the shows so it was just kind of like huh i mean even before we started filming you know all of us was hesitant about doing the television show because you know it's just a lot of drama with reality tv but she was the main one was like oh she didn't want to like i ain't even gonna tell you what she was saying off camera because it ain't no i don't have the facts or the receipts to tell y'all right now because you know me i like to back my stuff up with receipts so we're just going to leave off what she said off camera about it alone. But what I will say is that you can see on camera that she wasn't just jumping to do it. So why does she go in these interviews telling people, oh, yeah, I was looking forward to doing this. I didn't see that. Anyway. Um, well, when she was with Taj, she said her goal is to finally step out and find freedom. Since you guys all reunited about five, six years ago, Tiny has released a few solo things. The three of them released music together, and you and Tiny have done some things, and you guys have continued to do shows and travel the country. So what type of freedom do you think she's talking about? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I want to step out and, and find some freedom. Um, I would love to know what type of freedom she's talking about because in this group, we definitely have freedom. Everybody's doing their own thing. Like, clearly, I be stopping and doing whatever I want to do. Jake find out you killed his brother. You might wake up with a knife at your throat. So I don't know why her thing has to always be a secret or like a, oh, you know, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like she, she be her own enemy. She'd be her own enemy and be trying to blame us for it, for real. Because it didn't even have to be all that. The other thing is, yes, it was very um, Tasha specific, this episode. We in this thing. I mean, to me, they were just telling you the real. Like, she had a whole solo project that she was working on. And I just want to say, I love how y'all get to watch this now. But do y'all remember when y'all was giving us hell about that damn green dress back in, what was that, October? 
Y'all was giving us hell about that damn green dress and let her play victim saying, oh, they just leave me out. Now do you see all this stuff that's happening on this show was ha happened right before before the awards last year. So her acting funny with us, she had already had a solo deal, everything separate. She was separating herself in every way. And y'all was over here blaming us for her feeling. They called you bullies. Yes, y'all did. Y'all called us bullies. Yeah, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna, I'm gonna need an apology from y'all. Anyway, basically they set up the, the whole situation with her solo deal. They set up the fact that we caught wind of it. Obviously, once I told, when I once I heard through the grapevine, you know I passed it on to my little group mates. I did. I told Tiny that Tasha was planning to go solo. And we were all really feeling like we knew it was something. <laughs> like we always know it's somewhere. Like whenever she started doing something, we already know what's going on. You know what I mean? It wasn't that surprising. It was surprising just because of the timing of it, but it wasn't surprising. For me, it's like they said, oh, we're about to have this TV show. So let's set you up with a solo deal so we could use this to promote your solo project and leave the girls in the wind. <laughs> what it feels like that's what it felt like her conversation with her team was off, off camera or something like guess what obviously we have a truncated timeline to do this one-off show What's the timeline so i mean we're looking at doing this show in the next month i think um because this had all been dragging out for weeks even though for y'all this is only like episode three for us i think it had been a little bit over a month where we was really kind of waiting on her to give a real answer on if she was gonna do the performance or not. Because we couldn't start planning the show until we knew if she was gonna be a part of it or not. Yeah. Um, we have an official release rehearsal tomorrow, um, but you know, we kinda wanted to get together before the rehearsal, Tamika and I. So we in here trying to figure it out, make sure we got it right. So he doing extra credit. With some extra credit, yes. That's Today good. is some extra credit, for sure. I don't think y'all will be good. I don't got no choice. One, two, and three. So it was like no rehearsals being done, no creative being put together, no no choices being picked. And we we had, obviously, you have a deadline. You have to make the show happen before you finish filming. You can't just drag things out because you want to. When there's a TV budget, they only give you a budget to shoot for so many weeks, okay? And if you don't get it done in them weeks, then you looking like a fool. So we're like, girl, could you make up your mind already? Or either just say you're not going to do it so we can go move forward and make this happen. So it was a lot of stress because for me, I don't like to look crazy. And I don't like talking about things on television that I'm not going to actually achieve, right? Or at least try. This was an, a very annoying to me because I couldn't do nothing until we made some decisions. And it was so frustrating. Well, speak on it. So just to give you a background on how we were feeling. It was just a lot. I think even SWV was tired of her dragging everything out. So we got to figure this shit out. Like, they were like, okay, you know, let's make the decision. If she not going to do it, cool, let's know so we can move forward. So she walks into the meeting, you know, SWV in their rehearsal. Here we come. She's still like. <laughs> Barely want to put her hand in when it's time to everybody put their hands in. So, okay, now let's move forward to the part where y'all, it was in an uproar online today, which is the whole thing about SWV and Escape and who should go first, who should go last, who should have the headline, who should get the most uh, split money, whatever y'all feel. But here you come. All right, so let me just say, I'm over it. Hell no. There was no intent of any disrespect for SWV. Okay, I love SWV just like everybody else. Okay, I love their music and I respect their success. I respect that they came out before us and all of that. I respect that they have sold more records than us. 
I don't know about this 30 million record she talking about now. Now, I done went back and looked. Now, unless she's to add in, like, soundtracks and solo records and all kind of other stuff that she done did to that equation or counting streams or something, I don't know how she got the 30 million. But they have sold more records than us. We've all sold millions of records, okay? I think um, Jermaine Dupree posted our new, uh, most recent certifications. Anyway, we only a few... A mm, couple million, few millions um, separate from each other. To be clear, their first album sold the most for them. Second album, I think it probably went, maybe it went platinum, I'm not sure. And the third album, I don't know if it went gold. Our albums were consistently platinum across the board. And we had multiple platinum and gold singles just like they have, right? But with all due respect, this is business. And I had to bring up the conversation because I feel like everything in business, you have to set the tone for how things go from the beginning. So with that being said, before we move forward, just to give you background information, there were promoters who were trying to get involved to turn this situation into a full tour. So the promoters automatically are speaking as, you know, like trying to find out how much they're going to have to pay for each act. To be clear, I ain't opening up no more. I sold 30 million records, bitch. Let me start with the simple fact because she was like, I we ain't opening up for them. I done sold 30 million records, bitch. I'll never be opening up for them. And I was like, okay, here's another example how people can say stuff in the public eye and the public believes it when it's not true. Rissy! Don Juan came through with the receipts okay <laughs> baby it says escape on the great escape tour with special guests bell biv devote and swv the cover or the um promo poster for one of our shows on the tour where we were the headliners and they were the opening act <laughs> First time back with the girls doing a full show. Yes, this is the first show's Kansas City. Tomorrow's Oklahoma City. And Friday, I mean Saturday is Essence. And then we're going to Grand Prairie, Texas, which is just like Dallas, I guess. Um so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. What do I for you? you Lord God, Father Tiny, I thank you, God, Father, for all that you're doing in them, through them, Lord God. And I just bless you and I honor you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Shay. Ugly outfit. Ugly outfit. It was us and our guests were SWV and BBD. SWV went on first. Then 
and BBD. Ooh, yeah. All right. Hey, and E, keep it hot for you. And then I. Now that was multiple shows on that tour. It was like four. So they opened. They opened for us. Since then, we've done multiple, I don't know exactly how many, but it's been more than two, let's say that, in more recent years, I guess in the last two years or something, there were other shows that was like festivals or whatever, where we still were the headlining act of and they still went on before us. Even if you want to say it was like a festival with a whole bunch of people, we still went on at the end of the night. And they went on before or during the day. Okay? To be clear, because that was in the Vegas thing. That's how they, they came on at the daytime. We was on at the end of the night. So I say that to say it's not being cocky. It's when you have established yourself as a headlining act, you have to kind of like maintain that. So when you're dealing with these promoters, they can't think that they can lowball you the next time. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't about SWV. It's just about we got to maintain the fees that we get. Another example, I don't want to speak on exactly what their fee is, but at the time, our fee was three to four times what their fee is. So why would we agree to split our fee and split in half. Then that means we are lowering what we get just so that you they can say they felt comfortable. You get what I'm saying? Well, she was okay with, uh, it sounds like she would have been fine with you guys getting paid. More. No, no, just so no, because I heard them say on there something about, oh, oh so y'all don't want to split equal or something. Oh. Uh it was about multiple things i love swv i think swv is amazing but even if you sold the most records back in the 90s it's about who sells the most tickets in concerts today doing a little spring cleaning and came up on this little beauty here i forgot y'all this right here i'm sick i read this it's the great escape tour we first came back we sold out 28 cities and then they added two more which made it 30. So they gave us this um, plaque to remind us that we came back out and every arena sold out. New edition, right? We all love new edition. SWV has sold more records than new edition, y'all. But when have you ever seen them headline over new edition? Never. But you're not going to tell me that I've been headlining with you opening for me for the last six years. How? Oh, you know how they say, oh, since you got, since you came back. That's what she wanted to say to me. Yeah, I don't care if y'all want to say that whatever they was doing when I wasn't there. When I came back, if that's how you want to put it, when I came back, Tiny there, yes, we help the group. We're still a part of Escape, and we help Escape get more visibility, hence, I guess, more ticket sales. But do they have the fan base or the following that we have? No. So that fan base it's millions and millions and millions of followers more. And that is not our fault. I don't know, you know, it's not us trying to pull rank. It is business. The bottom line is we have established ourselves as a headlining act. The, okay, another thing she said, they do 50 shows a year. That means that you have oversaturated the market. A lot of promoters don't want to give you, you know, they don't want to make you the headlining act or they don't want to, pay you but so much because they feel like people have already seen you in the market okay that's another thing but back to my example to be clear just because you feel like you sold more records than someone and or if even if you did sell more records than someone in the 90s it doesn't mean you're going to sell more tickets to shows than them i don't even know has swv headlined anything in the last six years in the United States. I'm not trying to go overseas and I'm talking right here in the US of A. Anyway, I I hate 
I know business conversations can be uncomfortable. And when you have to advocate for yourself, because our group at the time, we were having a management issue. Let's talk about management, okay? We weren't agreeing on management. Anybody? So somebody had to say it if we were going to move forward to do this show or set, try to set up this tour. The tone had to be set from the beginning. And yes, I'm a businesswoman and I didn't care. It, I'll, take the, I'll take the L and let everybody be mad at me and say what is uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, even though my group members wasn't speaking up like that, they all felt the same. It's just the business part of it, I think, that she's making So wait, wait, time. so the business meeting, you all want to be paid more than us. We all felt the same. We all was like, okay, well, if we go on a tour with SWV, I, I would love for it to be a joint performance, but our fee ain't changing. And we should be the headlining act or consider if we gonna have a, a name on top or however it's gonna work, I don't know. So for the, all of you with your panties in a bunch and saying like, why should they go on at the SWV or why should they headline after SWV? Because we've been headlining at the SWV. What um, would have been better if we would have had a manager that we all agreed upon? Anybody? representing us then they could have had that conversation with the girls man with the swv's manager but it still would have been the same conversation <laughs> it just wouldn't have been between us but because our manager wasn't like we weren't all on board about management at the time i was advocating for us well you can't get so. mad at them for trying because basically they were gonna get paid more and they were gonna co-headline with you so that would have that that situation would have been good for them right listen my feelings don't get hurt about the business part, right? You can advocate for yourself, right? And nobody's supposed to take shorts. The only thing that I thought I was just a little thrown off by when she was just like, yeah, well, we, ain't hit, we ain't opening for y'all. Like, why would... We? And I'm like, but you've been opening for us. That's what I was thinking. I, I ain't want to get straight disrespectful because, you know, people feelings was hurting now. And I was like, but you've been opening for us, so why is this like a thing you know what i mean like like we done done multiple shows together in these past six years since i've been back as they like to say and y'all it's always going before us so why are you why does it matter now that's the way i was looking at it you know i want y'all to be clear i love swv i'm not trying to disrespect um swv and i not trying to take anything away from what they've accomplished with their record sales but just because you've sold more records than us Back in the 90s, does not mean you can sell more tickets to shows than we can right now during this time. This, obviously, going forward, become a very big issue. And I know you guys are going to be mad at us for the things that we probably will say. As I don't even remember what I was said. But y'all going to be hot about it because I know some of y'all are going to be like, oh, well... I love SUV. Why would they feel like they SWV so this many right? Well, I feel like they did not give you guys any type of um, information on what's actually going on in the real world outside of these TV cameras. Because what's happening in the real world is our group has been headlining and they have been opening. Yeah, no, I just think um, overall, I guess they felt like, you know, we doing this TV show together and we're equal on this TV show, then, you know, we should be equal in this performance. Now, if it was a one-time performance, which they may have felt like it was going to be, but I thought it was going to turn into a tour. So if, it, if they felt like that, then I maybe can see, understand what they're saying. But for me, if this is going to be a tour, the business or the way we, the things, our expectations need to be listed up front so that nobody has any confusion. And so that's all I was doing. So for those of you who don't like what I said, I, it's okay. You don't have to like what I said. It was business and I'm standing on it. It, it is what it is. I'm sorry. I don't they, mean to hurt feelings. They're they standing on how they feel. Yeah, they can stand on how they felt. They want to end the show. I was like, oh, you, you don't want to end the show, to start the show, get co-headliners, equal title, equal... Like, well, damn, like, I got to take shorts on everything for you to feel comfortable. Well, where, who's take, where, where they do that at? Anyway, 
hope you guys keep finding this show interesting. Hope y'all don't hate me too much, but I love y'all still. Follow everybody on the show, support everybody and stuff on the show, and thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, um, before I get to this ending part, let me just say, I wanted to say I love my son Ace. You know, he has his own YouTube page, and he is on here. Y'all saw him talking about his followers. Ace, how many people do you have subscribed to your YouTube channel now? 17,261. Ace has 18,300 subscribers on YouTube, and I ask that you please have all your kids subscribe to his page. He does cute family content for young people. So follow Ace Plays and Giveaways on YouTube. And I want to say thank you for allowing me to get to 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. Woo! It's exciting. I know it's it may not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to me, so I appreciate all your support. You gotta close your eyes. What, oh. <laughs> what am I doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what the fuck is that going on? <laughs> Congratulations! Y'all yeah, yeah, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> what the fuck is that going on? Lord, it felt like I was getting shot in here. <laughs> But at least they shot little hundred dollar bills. I cannot. That was scary. Thank you for watching. Speak on it. Y'all done scared me to death. Oh no, it ain't nobody else's. No. It's for you. Only for you.